there is a remarkable kind of butterfly that lives in southern Canada. The famous monarch butterfly. Every monarch, like every other butterfly, comes into the world after having gone through a perfectly designed series of changes. First, the mother butterfly deposits her eggs on a leaf. The larvae that hatch feed for a time on the leaves before becoming caterpillars. Later, they make a nest called a cocoon for themselves. The cocoon of a monarch butterfly is a wonder of design. It is attached to a branch of a tree with a very slender but strong thread. The caterpillar develops in this cocoon and gradually emerges as a wonderful new creature, a butterfly. At first its wings are flat and lifeless. But they expand as blood is pumped into them and the monarch is ready to fly. There is a very interesting piece of behavior that distinguishes monarchs from other species of butterfly. In the course of a year, four different generations of monarchs are produced. The first three generations have an average lifespan of about five to six weeks. But the fourth generation is very different. This generation will survive until it has completed an eight-month migration. The migration begins from various monarch centers in southern Canada and moves further south. One group goes to California and another group even further south to Mexico. It is interesting that all the monarchs meet each other on the way, as if they had received a command from one single center and continue together on the migration. The beginning of the monarch's migration has also been planned from one single center. They do not start out on their journey on just any day, but on that one day in the autumn, the autumnal equinox, when day and night are the same duration. After flying for two months, they reach the hot forests of the south. Millions of monarchs cover the trees like a tissue, and for four months, from December to March, they stay there eating nothing. They survive on fat stored in their bodies and only drinking water. The blossoming of the flowers in the spring is very important for the monarchs. After waiting for four months, they feast on nectar. Now they have stored the energy they will need to return to Northern America. At the end of March, before beginning their journey, they mate. On that day, the spring equinox, when day and night are of equal duration, the colony begins its flight north. At the end of their journey, they reach Canada and die shortly afterwards. But before they die, they give birth to the first generation of the year, which will survive for about one and a half months. Later, the second and third generations are succeeded by the fourth, which will once again begin the migration. This generation will again live six months longer than the others, and thus the chain continues. This amazing migration brings many questions to mind. 
How is it that each fourth generation is born so as to live six months longer than the others? How does this long-lived generation always coincide with the winter months? How do the butterflies always begin their migration on that day when night and day are of equal length? And how are they able to make that delicate calculation? How does the new generation of monarchs that has never before gone on a migratory flight know the way? All this demonstrates that monarchs have been created with a perfect migration plan and that they follow this plan to the letter. If there were an error in this plan, they would not be able to complete the migration. In that case, all the monarchs would have died in the winter and the monarch species would have become extinct. It is clear that these creatures have been created with this particular quality and that this extraordinary annual migration has been inspired in them. It is Allah, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, the creator and ruler of all beings, who is the author of this wondrous creation.